So still on the theme of um, add-ons, I thought I'd talk about uh, how we might get the gauges um, to work. I think I said in the early videos I run the gauges on a second PC across the network and there are a number of programs you can use um, to do that. There are some quite big expensive programs, uh, Project Magenta and um, some of the bigger programs that the guys who build the 737s and the really realistic, very complex sims might use. There are some more basic programs that you can use that will work across a network and just enable you to build um, gauges and or panels that you might want to use for your individual um, aircraft. So I've tried a few. So there's FS Panel Studio, which I think is, is quite a powerful um, program. FS Expand, which will have two elements, a, a server and a client. And that again is, um, is quite flexible. I found that a bit more difficult to configure um, across the network. And one of the really great programs that I used was, um, was GA Panel by flight one but when i tried to move that across the network onto the second computer i had some real problems with the registration and getting it to um to reinstall so although that panel for me worked quite well and it was quite realistic it was quite tortuous um to uh, set up and then on the um on the kind of g100 glass cockpit front flight one also do uh, G100 student program again that will work across the network it has a network module um, but that is um, quite expensive and it has got quite limited scope because it is obviously designed for one particular glass cockpit so unless you fly those um, those uh, newer planes then you're not going to get um, value out of it the one that I've settled on the one that I think is actually the most flexible and most robust is um, Panel Builder. And Panel Builder comes with um, with um, a couple of enhancements. So you can get the basic Panel Builder, which gives the um, the core instruments. You can get um, an add-on, uh, an add-on for um, EFIS, though the programs that that you will need if you're going to build a cockpit for um, for a bigger airliner or a 737 and also there's a third add-on each of these you have to buy separately that adds uh, military instruments for the older um, uh, military aircraft and here's a little bit of a run through based on a, a panel that i've built for the tomahawk in terms of how panel builder works uh, how it interfaces with the sim and hopefully that'll uh, let you know uh, how powerful it is, how flexible it is, and uh, you can consider whether it might add something for your build. So the uh, panel builder interface opens on the uh, operations tab. You can see the gauges and instruments you've got loading by pressing start. Individual instruments load either over a plain background or we'll talk about later how you can put an image behind. So the load screen, here's some of the uh, panels that I've uh, created. And the Tomahawk is the panel on which uh, the simulator is based. So you can see we start the Tomahawk panel. Each of the individual um, instruments gauges starts separately and they're overlaid onto the image. If we look at the airspeed as an example. So back to the main tab, select the building tab and remove instrument. Now if we go down and select the airspeed indicator, so it's highlighted, and then go back and um, select remove, so the airspeed indicator has been removed, we go back to the start tab, and you can see the airspeed indicator has been deleted. So let's look at how we add an instrument then. So back again to the building tab, add an instrument, you can tab down, all the instruments are listed in alphabetical order, and depending which add-on instruments you've added, there'll be there'll be more to select. We select airspeed indicator, add checked instruments, and you can see it's back in the list. 
back to the start tab and it'll present in the top left so you just click and hold and pull it over onto the uh, wherever you want it hold down the control button and using the mouse wheel you can resize it to whatever size uh, you want so if you move it just to the side we can see that the actual maximum speed and various values are not quite right on this gauge so if we right click select settings then we can change the maximum speed we can change the red yellow green and white arc markers to match the gauge that we're building and depending on the gauge or the instrument that you're dealing with it will have different selectable values some have none but most have values that you can change um, so if they're not completely accurate out of the box then you can change them to match the gauges that you need in most cases uh, for your particular aircraft uh, that you want to fly once you've changed the values we click save and then we can move it back by holding uh, clicking and holding move it back and then once we're satisfied is in the right place right click and then you can lock each gauge to avoid moving it accidentally and to make sure it reappears in the same place when you reopen uh, the panel so back to the main interface then um, so the interface as I said lists all of the um, instruments and gauges that and you can you can mix the match as the as you see fit depending on what panel uh, that you're building and across the top there are three tabs operation building and configuration you'll mainly use uh, or I find you'll mainly use the left two uh, tabs operation or building those are pretty much all of the items that you'll need to select so um, if we if we go back um, and use the operations tab then we select select edit panel this gives you options it gives the panel name at the top um, the first selection is to show bezels on the instrument so here you can see it adds the gray border and uh, the screw markers the securing markers to the to the instrument so let's go back in uh, select edit panel unselect that box and we'll go just back and see what that looks like and what difference it made so I personally think if you're using a background image and I'll talk again about the background image shortly it looks a bit neater without the bezels there's a night mode which is a fairly basic representation of night mode but then here's how to add the image so you select the right hand button image and then you simply need to take an image in your simulator with whatever program snip it resize it to the size of whatever monitor you've got that you're working on remotely and then save it either as a BMP or a PNG um, image then you simply need to browse from the button in this particular box and then open it and it will appear as the background image and select full desktop so you use the full um, the full monitor so the configuration tab has the user manual license information and also network configuration although I have to be honest I've never had to fiddle with that it's always worked fine uh, with uh, the defaults so back to the operations tab again so if we just start the panel and then you can see each of these are individual programs the instruments which makes them quite versatile you can uh, configure them mix and match them as you need to and then we'll talk now about how um, we actually connect it so you see when it's connected to the computer with the sim uh, running that um, the RPM the fuel gauges all the gauges are very reactive and they come alive and respond so just to show the different types of um, instruments that you can have if you just go into the load screen and um, so if you loaded the uh, EFS module and you wanted to build say a 737 panel again if you simply um, go through and select the various instruments you need resize them as I described and again you can see here they respond uh, to the simulator once um, once connected 
And similarly, back into the load panel, I built this one for the Cessna 310. Uh, instruments are not quite um, the same as the instruments on the original panel, but they're pretty close, I think. And you can configure them, and you can see here that I've actually got the bezels um, loaded on this particular uh, panel. And if you move the knobs, not only do they, they change the settings in the panel build on the remote computer, but the uh, the uh, computer, uh, the sim computer, and the uh, aircraft itself respond uh, accordingly. So back to edit panel, I'll just show you if you take off the instrument bezels on this. Uh, so you can see this particular picture that I have uh, taken, the, the gauges are a little bit oval. I think it's the angle that I took it at. So it is difficult to get the, um, the round gauges to fit neatly. And so if we add the instrument bezels and knobs, then it actually um, it looks a bit better. On this particular panel so again it's a question of uh, horses of course is it a question of what you actually prefer um, for any individual uh, particular uh, panel so if we think about how to connect to the main computer so back on the main simulator machine if we open the install program it gives an option to install the main program but also three options to install different interfaces FSX prepared and X-Plane uh, if you want to um, select the interface, um, this one's for prepared, click connect. Now if it doesn't connect, it may give you a warning message. You need to be running the simulator before you can uh, use this connect tool. So start the simulator and restart the connect tool. And then once you're in the cockpit, press connect and you can see it connects straight away, no problem. And one great facility is that you can start and stop uh, the panel on the remote computer from this interface. So I hope that was a useful uh, insight into uh, Panel Builder. Uh, that's all I've got for you today. If you want to send, um, send any sort of comment and uh, let me have your views and feedback, uh, feel free to subscribe. There'll be other videos coming up with further enhancements. Uh, I thought I would cover um, weather and wider scenery programs and that's all I've got for you today and I'll catch you next time.